Today on the Hat and Beard Show, we'll be discussing the Lions preseason week three against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Dan Campbell has already come out and stated that the first team offense will play the majority of the first half. Jared Goff has been given the day off, which, despite Dan Campbell's criticism about his own intelligence, is one of the smarter decisions he's made. That being said, with the ones in running on offense and defense, we already know what we have for our first team offense. All of those positions are already set. What we really need to look at, and what we should look to expect from out of our defense in this coming game, as we have a few position battles that are still up for debate. We'll get into that and more. Roll the footage! Welcome in, everybody. As you know, I'm tempering our expectations as we roll into the Week 3 preseason against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's not that great of a team. They're not a Super Bowl contender like they once were. They're in a rebuild, and we need to come to realize that this is the preseason. What we're seeing now, most of these players aren't going to make the roster. We're arguing about guys who are fighting for practice squads and their career. The number one thing that we should look for in the Week 3 matchup against Pittsburgh is that all five of our offensive linemen get away from the game healthy. Our offensive line is the strong point of our te entire team, and to get all five of those guys in and out and healthy for the regular season would be a huge triumph and a step in the right direction for this regular season. Considering it is the final game of the preseason, our players on defense that are vying for positions and fighting for their jobs need to make use of these meaningful snaps against their ones and twos. You need to either get some good footage on film, or you need to impress the coaches to figure out who, if they are going to actually pick you, Jeff Okuda, to beat out Will Harris. That's one of the battles that I want to focus on, is Will Harris and Jeff Okuda. As you guys know, I'm very high on Jeff Okuda, and I hope the best for him. I genuinely wish that Jeff Okuda would reach his ceiling as the number three overall pick. I don't think that's going to happen because, again, he's been riddled with injuries and he's hangover from the Matt Patricia era. But I would really appreciate it if Jeff Okuda, may, namely because of my season-long bet I have on DFS, he's part of a, he's the third leg of a three-leg parlay, but if Jeff Okuda could have a comeback player of the year style season, that would be awesome. That would go a long way with showing that Dan Campbell is not only a culture change, but is able to condition and bring up other players from previous administrations that maybe put a negative poisonous mentality into the player's mind. Dan Campbell will then be able to showcase, look, look what I was able to do with Jeff Okuda, which will entice other free agents to want to come to the team to have maybe that same effect happen to them. The second thing, well, I guess you could really say it's it's 2A because the other things that I want to focus on really are equally as important, and that is our interior defensive line play because we've been arguing for the entirety of the offseason and the majority of the preseason that we need to bring in another interior defensive lineman because Levi Anzarike is hurt and is going to be a bust. Uh, Zach Pascal, although he's a, an edge player, he's going to be hurt for a couple of weeks before we get him back. You know, Romeo Cora and other edge players. So if you look at the personnel that we have on defense, it's uh, become quite evident that Aaron Glenn is going to be playing a lot of personnel games, a lot of moving players around, a lot of maximizing their talents by putting them in positions where they can succeed. And I am just curious, is he going to open the lid up and really showcase what he plans to do with our defensive line players? Or are we just going to kind of play back and rely on Ali McNeil, who's had an outstanding camp and a sensational preseason? Ali McNeil has, has, has taken that step to becoming the next uh, level of player that we all think he can be, uh, as where Levi Anzarike has taken that step back, which is unfortunate for him. But hey, let's go get it, Ali McNeil. So we want to pay attention to the interior defensive line play and see how Aaron Glenn is putting position players in position and whom he's putting out on the field in those positions to succeed because the player personnel packages that he places out on the field are going to be rather evident the first few series as to who's probably going to end up making the final 53-man roster. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, the 2B thing that we are looking at, because again, the interior defensive line play and the linebacker play are equally as important to making that transition and stepping up to the next level to elevate our defense to not, not I don't, I'm not asking them to be elite, I'm asking them to be serviceable on a regular basis, not a bottom tier defense. We need to get a lot of pressure and we need to get a lot of turnovers to put our offense into a position to succeed by sitting on the ball, having 20 plus play drives where we eat up eight minutes off the clock, where we just break the back of our opponent with our big bully offensive line. But what we need to see is who has taken the step for the linebackers 
uh, uh, Calvin Shepard has come out and said that Derek Barnes has finally taken that step in practice that has elevated him to the next level of play, where he can be a good starter. Because Derek Barnes, although we were really high on him last year as a rookie out of Purdue, never actually seemed to have taken that step, at least on film. Now, granted, he's always in the hole and is able to fill and stop the run, but he's terrible in coverage, and he gets lost in the sauce a little bit. But if, if, if we want to believe in what Calvin Shepard is telling us, and we want to buy into the coaching staff, and he's not just giving us coach speak, or he's not just hyping up his player trying to elevate him, you know, I, we've seen in Hard Knocks where, where he was com- making the veterans compete against, I mean, uh, against Rodrigo. I mean, he's literally, he was literally telling these people, uh, you know, this is a rookie. This is a sixth round draft pick rookie, and you're making me play him over you. Get your head out of your butt, you know. And and now he's, he's, he's said that, you know, Derek Barnes has taken that step, and if that's the case, then I, I'm excited to see that. But we need to look and see who Aaron Glenn and Calvin Shepard are planning on being our starting linebacker rotation because we can pretty much pencil in Alex Anzalone. Uh, uh, you know, he's had the last couple games off because he is enough of a veteran and enough of a Dan Campbell system guy. He knows what he's doing, and we're all... Since we're all so high on Malcolm Rodriguez, we're pretty sure Malcolm Rodriguez is going to be a starter. If not right away, by week three, Malcolm Rodriguez needs to be a starter out on the field 80% of the defensive snaps. Finally, I want to be shutting the door on the backup quarterback job. Whoever ends up winning this battle, this is the last that I want to be discussing about them. This is the last that I want to talk about Tim Boyle or David Blau. Because if we're discussing about Tim Boyle or David Blau come the regular season, That means that Jared Goff has been hurt and is no longer playing. Our team is not that good to begin with with Jared Goff. And we've become significantly worse of a team with David Blau or or, or Tim Boyle as the starting quarterback. This is the preseason. This is for guys who are trying to make the roster. We've been getting really high on backup players. By now, the coaching staff has already figured out 50 of the 53 men going on this roster, okay? We need to temper our expectations and come to realize that half of the players that we're arguing about aren't even going to be on an NFL roster come a week from now. We need to temper our expectations and realize that none of this actually matters. None of this really matters until we get to the regular season, okay? That's what I mean, the regular season, where the wins and the losses, and the stats actually matter. That's going to do it for today. You guys have been great. I've been Hat and Beard. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Look at this sorry, miserable, squashed thing. Can anybody tell me what's wrong with this picture?